to live with in my heart It would be that She spits perfume. You're just supposed to deliver the milk and save your wife from Marks. I've seen her riding around in Seymour's big Cadillac, making out like she's a movie star. Yeah, you can tell your good-looking sister that Farmer Gutsell don't need no Cadillac to show a girl a good time. Come on, man, you want to have a good time, baby? Come on, man, you want to show you a good time? Come on. Who's Come on. making so much noise? These juvenile uh, delinquents. Uh, uh, gee, imagine. I hope we didn't wake you. Hi, hi, Madge. What do you want? Madge, a bunch of us guys were chipping in on a hot rod, radio and everything. I get it every Friday night. How about it, Madge? I get it every Tuesday, Madge. I'm not one of those girls that jumps into a hot rod every time you boys turn a corner and honk. If a boy wants a date with me, he can come to the door like a gentleman, ring the bell, and ask if I'm in. Who does she think she is? Madge goes steady with Alan Seymour. He brings her flowers every time they go out. Uh. I can't send you flowers, baby, but I can send you. Well, listen to him bragging. Let me take you out one night after Seymour drops you off. You'll never know the difference. I don't go out with other boys. Everyone in town knows that. Yeah, you like riding around in Seymour's big Cadillac, feeling like Mrs. Rich, bitch. I'm sure I never heard of the lady, so I couldn't possibly know who you are referring to. Hey, here comes Seymour. I can handle Seymour. Come on, Madge, please. Come on, she's too stuck up to give a guy a break. I am not. It ain't fair. A gal as good looking as you, Come on. never giving a guy a break. It Come ain't on. fair. You yeah, go back to your milk. I'm not stuck on myself. Those boys make me so mad. Hi, Alan. Hi, Millie. Did you come by to take me to work today? No. I bet you forgot it's a holiday. I bet anything you forgot. I never forget. Oh, aren't they pretty? Oh. I thought you might like to take them to the picnic. Billy, take them out to the refrigerator for me. Who was your servant this time last year? I made your bed this morning. I'll be quiet. I have to make it every morning if I want the room to look decent. <coughs> oh, save your breath. Oh, we going swimming this afternoon, Alan? Oh, uh, sure. Oh, boy. Gee, it's good to sleep late on a Monday morning. I've done a day's work already. But this is a holiday. Well, my dad wanted me to drive out to the farms and collect all the rents. I don't mind. I like to work. You're pretty unusual. But it's true. Every morning in college, I was up at 6.30 to do my studying. You can lose yourself in your work, just as well as you can having fun. Lose yourself? Well, yes, when other things go wrong. What other things? Oh, well, I don't know. What? Well, I never had much fun in college like the other fellas did. Why not? Well, I don't know. With all those beautiful college girls around? Oh, Madge, I never even hoped to find a girl as lovely as you. Honest. At school, I didn't even think about the pretty girls. They were always so popular, and there were so many other fellows trying to get dates. I just kept my mind on my studies. You're the nicest boy I know. Oh, Madge, you're so beautiful. I can't believe you're mine. Every morning, I wake up, and I pinch myself to see if I'm dreaming. You're joking. I'm not. Even when I pinch myself, I can't believe it. Something will happen, I say. She isn't real. She'll disappear. Ellen, don't say that. Oh, I was just kidding. Well, it bothers me. Why? Because. Well, I don't care if you're real or not. I love you. Well, just the same. I'm real. Well, hello, Alan. I didn't expect to find you here so early. Have you had your breakfast yet? Oh, uh, yes, thank you. There'll be a big crowd at the picnic tonight. Maybe you better reserve us a table. Get one if you can by the river, close to a Dutch oven. 
Oh, great. <laughs> Have you found a date for Millie yet? Mom, Millie doesn't like boys. Oh, she'll find a boy she likes one of these days. There'll be a lot of dancing at the park tonight. It's a shame Millie doesn't have a young man who can take her. Isn't there anyone you can find? Well, no, Mom, I... Alan went to college. He doesn't know any of the boys in town. Oh, the boys in town are a worthless lot. Maybe Millie's better off without a date. Hey, Matt, you working with me? Not bad. You have to stay here and try on your dress if I'm ever going to finish it. Well, can I try it on this afternoon? This afternoon I have to fry chickens. Oh, Alan, would you go to the poultry house for me? Oh, let me pay for the Mrs. Owens. No, this party is on Helen Potts and me. They said the chickens would be ready. All right. See you later then. Bye, Alan. Oh, I wish I'd known a boy like him when I was a girl. <laughs> I think Alan has an inferiority complex. What, his father's a banker? Well, anyone can have an inferiority complex. Do you know that? No. They say even Elizabeth Taylor has one. <laughs> well, he's a fine young man, and he's head over heels in love with you. Mom, when we go to the movies, he just sits there holding my hand. He doesn't even watch the picture. I get kind of embarrassed. <laughs> You're pretty. Of course he wants to look at you. Come, try on your dress. But I just washed my hair. Well, then hold it up against you so I can check the head. You know, boys like Alan don't grow on trees. You better get busy, girl. Mom, sometimes I think I'd like a career. What kind of a career? Well, Alan says if I'd gone away to college and joined one of those big sororities, I'd have won the beauty contest. <laughs> well, I can't send you to college. Millie's going. Millie won herself a scholarship. And I was too dumb. Now, Madge, you don't need college the way that Millie does. I bet if I went to New York or Chicago, I could get a job as a model. And those jobs pay lots of money. Oh, nonsense. Or I could even go on the stage. <sighs> what would you do on the stage? Walk back and forth wearing jewels and furs, smiling at people. Come back here and quit posing. I'm not posing. You pose like a duchess all day long. Your father spoiled you, carrying you on his shoulder all over the neighborhood for people to brag about. You blame everything on Dad. And now I make you one pretty dress after another and you pose some more. You better get busy, girl, and think of the future, because the future's not going to think of you. I'm only 18. And next summer you'll be 19, and then 20, then 21, and then the years will fly by so fast you lose count. First thing you know, you'll be 40 and still selling candy in the dime store. Well, you don't have to get morbid. Pardon me, ma'am. Was that Al Seymour just drove off in the Ford? Why, yes. Well, I thought that was Al. I wasn't sure, though. Do you know Alan? Al's about the best friend I ever had. Is that so? Al and I, we went to school together. Well, I'm afraid I didn't go to school much, but Al did. He helped me with my studies, but it didn't do much good. I left after the football season ended. He'll be back later. Gee, well Al's face fall when he sees me. I can't wait to see Al. Now who is that? He must have been at Mrs. Potts for breakfast. A tramp! Now, can't he eat his breakfast at Mrs. Potts without being a tramp? Well, I don't believe he's a friend of Alan's. I don't see why not. Well, he's not a young man of Alan's caliber. You just didn't like him. Well, it, it disturbs a woman to have a man appear suddenly like that out of the blue. I know why you didn't like him. I bet anything I know. Why? You know why. Well, confess. Well, it seems to me he could have put on a shirt before addressing two strange women. I thought that was the reason. Here, hold your dress up again. Everyone around here gets to dress up and go places except me. Alan's trying to find you a date for the dance tonight. Well, I don't want Alan asking any of the crazy boys in town to take me any place. Beggars can't be choosers. You shut up! Madge, that was me. Oh, I don't care. If she wants a date, why doesn't she dress up and act decent? Because I'm gonna dress and act the way I want to. That's why, and if you don't like it, you know what you can do. Always complaining because she doesn't have any friends. But she smells so bad that nobody wants to be near her. I hate you! Girls! Claudina! Madge is the pretty one. Madge puts on lipstick and looks in the mirror to see how pretty she is. But she's so dumb, they almost had to burn the schoolhouse down to get her out of it. That's not so! Oh, isn't it? You never want to graduate.
graduated if it hadn't been for Jumpin' Jeter. Who's Jumpin' Jeter? Professor Jeter teaches history. Kids called him Jumpin' Jeter because he's so jumpy with all the pretty girls in his classes. He was flunking Madge until she went after school to go see him. And she cried and said, I just don't know what I would do if I didn't pass history. Mom, she's making that up! It's my fun I am! Millie, I hate you! Girls! Girls! Just because I have a little bride and you go around looking like a scarecrow! I'd rather prove my brains and my kids are morons! Good! Let your slut you take that bag! I'll kill you! Stop it this instant! What will the neighbor say? She can't call me good and get by with it! You've called her worse names! It doesn't hurt what names I call her! She's pretty, so names don't hurt her at all! She's pretty, so nothing else matters! Be careful how you talk to the child. You always take her side. I feel sorry for Millie. You never feel sorry for me. Well, I would if there were any reason. You think more of Millie than you do of me. Now, Madge, that's not so. Well, you talk like it at times. You were the firstborn. Your father thought the sun rose and set in you. Things were changed by the time Millie was born. Mom, did you love Dad? What a question. Well, I'm serious. Well, did you? Well, of course I did. I don't see why it's so hard to admit. Well, it can be embarrassing to love a man. I don't see why. Well, a man is stronger in most ways, and, and a woman is weak to begin with. And, and if she's in love with him, then she's all the weaker. You have to fight for things in this life. And it can sometimes be a disadvantage to be in love. Anybody mind an old maid school teacher joins their company? Sit down, Rosemary. <laughs> Shoot. I like a little town like this where you can go around as you please on your day off and nobody gives a darn. I smell smoke. Young man over at Helen Potts burning the trash. Oh. If I were Helen, I'd make him put on a shirt. I agree. <laughs> Mail come yet? No mail today, Rosemary. It's Labor Day. Oh, I forgot. Thought I'd be getting a letter from Eustace. He's the man I met at the high school picnic last year. Been in love with me ever since. Nice enough fella and a peck of fun, but I've no use for them once they start getting serious on me. <laughs> you school teachers are mighty independent. <laughs> I've lived this long without a man. I don't see what's to keep me from getting on without one. Be here for lunch today? No, Rowena Bauer, Sock, and Mary Lou McCord are having a welcome home party down at the hotel. Irma Cronkite's coming by for me as soon as I get my face ready. What's that you're rubbing in? Poncella three-way tissue cream makes a good base for your makeup. I read an article in the Women's Home Companion about a young girl who got skin poisoning from using all those face creams. Harriet Bristol, she's the American history teacher. She got a hold of some of that beauty clay last year and it darn near took her skin off. <laughs> well, we girls thought she had leprosy. Hmm. Hey, how do you do your right hand? Well, if you were nicer to people, maybe people would do something nice for you sometime. I'll get along. How come, Millie? You got a bow? No. You can't kid me. Girls don't get their fingernails painted unless they think some boy is going to take notice. Oh, she likes boys. She just wants to be different. I wish everyone keep their fake mouth shut. Millie, it looks like you'd be ashamed to talk that way to Miss Sydney. Oh, shoot, I don't care. Tomorrow I'm going to have kids yelling at me all day long. <laughs> Might as well be getting used to it. Well, I was talking to Madge. Madge, your hair's dry now. Run in and try on your dress. Oh, Flo. Come on over, Helen. Flo, are you going to be using your clothesline? No. Poor Helen Potts. She has her hands full. Mrs. Ellens, why does she call herself Mrs. Potts? I thought you said her mother had the marriage in old. She did. Well, how long was she married to the boy? A few days. You mean they never lived together? Helen's mother kept her locked in her room until the annulment papers came through. I declare. That was during the First War. Young boy was killed overseas. Left everything he had to Helen. Poor Helen was brokenhearted. She's been using his name ever since. Makes the old lady mad. I should think she should be able to do as she likes. She takes care of that old lady all day long. Waits on her hand and foot. She can't leave the house two minutes without her wanting to know where she's been. Shh. Here she comes. Oh, did 
you girls see that handsome young man I've got working for me? I've got better things to do with my time than look at handsome young men. Helen Potts, you're going to end up dead the way you take in trance and all sorts of riffraff. He's not a tramp. He's a very nice young man. Oh, he went to school with Alan. I don't believe that for a second. Well, that's what he says. Alan! Alan! I'm over at Flo's, Mom. I'll be back in a while. Alan! Alan! You don't need me, Mama. I'll be back in a while. You and your poor old mother there all alone? Looks like you'd be scared to take in some stranger. He stood at the back door smiling. Please, ma'am, he said, have you anything good for an empty stomach? Oh, I wasn't scared at all. What'd you feed him? I fixed biscuits. Oh, Helen, you didn't go to all that trouble. Oh, I haven't had occasion to fix biscuits in a long time. And a woman should keep in practice. And then I gave him uh, ham and eggs and all the hot coffee he could drink. Oh, he saw a piece of cherry pie in the icebox. And he wanted that, too. Can you imagine? Cherry pie for breakfast. Young men like him take their sweet things where they find them. <laughs> Seems to me a young man who amounted to anything would have more pride than to beg his breakfast off a lady. He's working for his breakfast. For months I wanted that big chiffonier in the front room, moved up to Mama's room so I could store sheets in it. But I couldn't budge that big bulky thing. Oh, but he's a husky young man. <laughs> he moved that around like it was made of tissue paper. Helen, you did not let him go upstairs. Of course. Sounds to me like Mrs. Potts has herself a new boyfriend. I don't think that's very funny. Oh, shoot, don't pay any attention to me. I'm just a tease. Come on up, Helen. Well, I, I suppose I could go over and sit on my own front porch. Old widow ladies like us gotta stick together. But I hate to sit on my own front porch. All the neighbors walk by and they see me there all alone. I like to sit out here where all the young people are coming and going. Mrs. Potts, if I said anything to offend you, I want to apologize. How does it feel, Madge? Well, I seem to have grown some since the last dress you made me. Oh, is it Madge the pretty one? Every time you see her, she's prettier than she was the time before. We'll see what we can do. Madge is the pretty one, but Millie, she's the smart one. And Millie's going to be a great novelist someday. I can feel it in my bones. What's that you're reading now, Millie girl? Oh, The Ballad of a Sad Cafe. Oh, good Lord, Mrs. Owens, you let your daughters read filthy books like that. Well, is there anything wrong with that book? Everyone in it is some sort of degenerate. That's not so. It's on the reading list of all the colleges. Oh, those college professors have no morals. Will you give me back that book? I will not have you reading anything immoral. It's not immoral, Millie. It's not. Millie, you all shut up. You stupid characters don't know what you're talking about. This is a wonderful book. Where she comes by her taste, I don't know. Young people nowadays read all sorts of trash. You should see some of the pictures she has in her room. Those pictures are by Picasso, and he's a great artist. A picture of a woman with six eyes. And what do you have on your wall? Pictures of Robert Mitchum and Glenn Ford and Burt Lancaster. They're prettier than Picasso. Oh, Lord, that Picasso, another crazy man, paints all those wild pictures that don't look like anybody at all. I saw some of his pictures in the Life magazine, and they weren't very pretty to look at. Well, pictures don't have to be pretty. Uh, oh, oh! Helen, stay here. Helen. He had a gun. Helen! Oh, I see what it is. Don't go back there. Your mother's old. She has to go soon anyway. Oh, oh. What happened? Oh, thank goodness you're here, Helen. Helen Potts took in some young woodlum with a gun. A gun? Match, run upstairs and take care of your friends. Helen, Alan's here now. He'll go with you. I'm sure that young man had a gun. I'm sure of it. There's no gun. Everything's all right. Oh, oh. I was a bad girl. What happened? <laughs> well, I got a new bottle of cleaning fluid this morning, and I threw it into the trash instead of the old one. <laughs> and that young man is more frightened than we are. Oh, he ran into my laundry line trying to get away. Millie, can you help me, please? <laughs> sure. Mom, can you finish my dress now? All right, all right. I do hope nobody got hurt. Hal? Hey, Hal, come on over. 
Hey, Al. You didn't lace quite a shot. Well, I always do that. So what are you doing here? Well, aren't you even going to say hello? Hello? Oh. Well, I didn't figure I was stealing your car. What name did you invent for it? Well, I knew you had insurance, right? Of course. So I knew you'd get yourself a new car without putting out any dough. Well, I even figured I'd be doing you a favor helping you get a new car. Well, and besides, Al, I had to get to California. I just had to. But once I got out there, I was telling myself I'd be able to pay you back. Yeah, I'd pay you back double. You mean once you crash the movies? Well, other guys have done it. Did you finally get out? Yeah, I got out. How? After I smashed your car, I went home. The old man died. Oh. Well, he left a little insurance. I used that. Would well, you get a test? Yeah, I got the test, okay? It's more than I expected. I don't see why one of those talent scouts say they come see me play football and give me a screen test if they didn't mean it. It happens to school every year. I was about to have a big career, Al. They were going to call me Brush Carter. <laughs> How you like that? It took a lot of pictures of me and my shirt off. <laughs> Real rocket. Then they dressed me up like a pirate, like the Foreign Legion. They put me in a pair of tights and a cape. They gave me a hat with a lot of plumes and a sword. And there I was, Al. I was making with the sword play. You should have seen me. Well, didn't they give you any lines to read? What? Yeah, that, that part went okay. It was my teeth. Your teeth? Well, yeah, you see out there, you gotta have a certain kind of teeth or they can't use you. They told me they're gonna have to pull out all my teeth to get me new ones. Yeah. Oh. Well, this babe explained the whole thing to me. What babe? The babe that got me to test. Oh. Well, I was just nice to her, that's all. Anything wrong with that? Let's get straight to the point, Hal. You're broke. He came all the way back here to I hitchhike down. To borrow money from me, because he think I'd be a big enough staff to give it to you. Gee, Hal, I don't see why I gotta put everything in black and white like that. Sorry, I can't help you, Hal. Well, all I want is a job. I just finished college, and I'm beginning to settle I'm down. I'm a hard worker. Well, maybe you are. Well, I was on the ranch all summer out in Nevada, working hard, too. In bed every night at 10, up at 6, no liquor, no babes. You could have been proud of me, Al. Well, I don't know. Oh, come across, Al. Give a guy a break. I'm not Henry J. Kaiser. I don't have jobs at my fingertips that I can distribute to anyone who comes along. Sure, Al. Why do you come to me, Hal? Always to me. Because. Just tell me. Because you're the only friend I got. Oh, cut it. Well, it's a fact. You remember how it was in the fraternity? All those other bastards looking down their nose at me, making sure I used a fork instead of a knife. You're the only decent guy I know in this whole fouled up world. Oh, gee, thanks. Well, it's true. You're the only friend I got, whether you want to be or not. Why don't you just go home? Not since the old man died, nah. Well, maybe your mother needs you. Needs me? Not her. She took over the old man's filling station. She's in the grave. Well, then get a job from her. I can't even look her in the face without getting sick. Hal, that's not fair to say about your own mother. The old man left the filling station to me. Well, then go back and settle with her. But she told the lawyers he was bug house so she could take over. Oh, golly. Well, you see, the old man started drinking again. Yeah, you told me once that he was He'd drinking. been sober for six years. Looked like he was going to stay that way. The old lady, she had to have one last good fight out of him, so... So, so he went on his last... Bender! Oh, gee, I'm awfully sorry, Hal. It's the kind of thing that easy, Hal. I got to amount to something, Hal. I just got it. You're not going to do it overnight. You're not going to do it by playing football or, or getting into the movies. Yeah, I know. All right, Hal. I'll get you a job. Well, that's all I want, Hal. A job. A good job. I want to be like you. Like me? Yeah, I want a job in a nice office where I can wear a sharp suit and give dictation to a secretary and talk over the phone about enterprises and stuff. I'm not much more than an errand boy myself, taking orders from everyone at the bank. I make $200 a month. Is that all? Well, I know my dad has plans for me, but right now I'm content to learn the business from the bottom up. Makes sense. If you want to get anywhere in life, Hal, you've got to learn to work hard and be patient. <laughs> yeah, that's something I gotta learn. Patience. Millie iced the cake for me. You want me to run the vacuum for you, ma'am? Oh no, Mama's sleeping now. You can just forget it. I feel I've been 
more than paid for the breakfast. You suppose any place I can wash up? Oh dear, if you, if you use my bathroom now, you'd wake up Mama. Oh, we got a shower in the basement. Would your mother mind? No, come on, I'll help you. St. Clair's hiring lots of new men, aren't they? Oh, yes, Alan. Betsy Hamilton told me that Carrie wanted a hundred new men to put in that new pipeline. And I heard they're paying great salaries, too. Oh, oh yes. Those men make very good money. They're all driving new cars now. Oh, I'll have to call Carrie Hamilton this afternoon. Yes. Is this a surprise party. party I'm crashing? Oh, my, you're dressed up. It's my new fall outfit. Got it over in Kansas City. Paid twenty-two fifty for the hat. Oh, you school teachers sure do have nice things. And we don't have to ask anybody when we want to get them, either. Do you have for lunch today, Rosemary? No, we're having a welcome home party down at the hotel. <laughs> lunch and bridge for the new girls on the faculty. Irma Cronkite's coming by for me. Mom, can't I go swimming, too? Who will fix lunch? I've got a million things to do. Well, it wouldn't kill Millie if she ever did any cooking. No, but it would kill the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary, we're here. Oh, you're going to love Rosemary, Sydney. She's a heck of fun, said the craziest things. What is that you're saying about me, Irma Cronkite? Rosemary, Sydney! <laughs> Gee, it's good to see you, kid. How was your vacation? Slept under the blankets every night. <laughs> How was yours? Oh, I worked like a slave. But I had fun, too. I don't care if I never get that master's. I'm not going to be a slave all my life. She's been telling me about all the wicked times she had in New York. And not at Teachers College, if I may add. Kid, <laughs> this is Christine Schoenwalder, taking Mabel Fremont's place in feminine hygiene. I know we're going to be great friends, Christine. I can tell already. I certainly hope so. In a hot summer, Mrs. Owens. <laughs> Terrible. Good to see you back, girls. Welcome home, girl. Well, kid, we better get a hustle on. Tell her about Helen Hayes, Irma. <gasps> oh, kid, I saw all the smash hit shows in New York. Oh, I love a good show. And I had this one friend took me backstage to meet her. Oh, she was sweet. Said she was so natural, but just like you and I. Her play wasn't very good. No, there aren't any good plays anymore. <laughs> I think Rosemary smother in those winter clothes. Well, she's, you know, I don't know. She's always asking about not having any use for a man. I don't care how she denies it. She's out to get a man. Talk's cheap. Hey, Hal, you want to go swimming? I have extra trunks in the car. Why not? Why, when did he... Oh, Mrs. Owens, this is my friend Hal Carter. He's a fraternity brother. Fraternity? Glad to make your acquaintance, man. Well, any friend of Alan's is a friend of ours. Thanks, ma'am. Now, Millie will have a date for the picnic. Oh, we're having a picnic tonight for all the young people. You can come, too. Well, I don't think it's right me barging in in this way. Nonsense. A picnic is no fun without lots and lots of young people. <laughs> I'm going to bake another cake. Isn't your sister gone swimming? No, Madge has got to stay home and cook lunch. <laughs> you mean she cooks? Oh, Madge cooks and sews and does all those things that women do. <laughs> Alan, is that boy really your fraternity brother? Oh, well, he's not really a fraternity brother because he never did, never did get initiated. Well, I don't see how a boy like him ever got into college. Oh, how a spectacular football record. In high school, down in Arkansas, the coach brought him up to campus and gave him his expenses and tuition. Well, why did your fraternity take him? Well, fraternities like to pledge football players. It's good publicity. Hal started in every game of the season. Why didn't they initiate him? Well, Hal broke his arm Thanksgiving. The doctors say he can never play again. And then your fraternity put him out? Well, the other fellas didn't like him much. Of course they didn't. Well, I think those fraternities are the most snobbish institutions I've ever heard of. <laughs> well, sometimes I blame the fellas. Sometimes I had to blame Hal. I, I guess it's no one's fault, really. Was he blackballed? Yes, that's the word they used for it. Blackballed? Now that we've asked him, Mrs. Owens, I, I don't think we should work. Helen Potts, you asked him. Why don't you mind your own business? Oh, he'll be company for Millie. Everything will be all right. Is he wild? No. Of no, course no. he is. Does he drink? Uh, a little. How pays attention to me, Mrs. Owens? I'll see that he behaves. Well, I just don't want anything to happen to Millie. Millie is perfectly capable of taking care of herself, Mom. You pamper her. How and Millie will get along great. And besides, we've already asked him. Let's see this evening, dear. About 5.30. I was 
just thinking, wouldn't it be nice if that young man were a little more like Alan, and Alan were a little more like the young man? <laughs> well, man, can't expect a man to be everything. No, of course not. Hey, Al, get the lead out of your pants! <laughs>